Today on SAU News, substance abuse. Is it an issue on our campus? What can be done? Southern students take to New York to promote Acuna soaps. We give you the scoop. These stories and more coming up. SAU News starts now. Welcome to SAU News. I'm Brandon Bell. And I'm Noah Byman. Our weekly newscast is brought to you by the School of Journalism and Communications. Substance abuse may seem like a distant problem until it hits close to home. What does substance abuse look like on our campus and what resources are available? Reporter Josue Vega brings us the story. Okay, last time. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Most of us are familiar with this iconic drug awareness ad from the 80s. Yet substance abuse may seem like a sideline issue on a classically conservative campus like ours. But is this truly the case? Students had varied takes on substance abuse on campus. So alcoholism, I mean, there probably is. I don't know everybody on campus, so there probably is a bit of a problem. I do think that substance abuse is an issue on our campus. I have personal knowledge of people that I think um, consume substances on a more than regular basis. Yeah, I just feel like it happens everywhere and Southern wouldn't be like the exception to that. Lakeview Health Addiction Treatment Center states that Tennessee consistently ranks near the top of U.S. state substance abuse rates. We spoke to a student on campus who shared with us her former struggle with substance abuse. At her request, we have blurred her face. Um, work was interesting because I was hungover all the time and I don't function well hungover. Uh, so I would not show up to work. I was fired multiple times because I just wasn't showing up for like weeks on end. The anonymous student informed us that in her experience, substance abuse can take many surprising forms. When we think of substance abuse, we tend to think of alcohol and other drugs, but even something as seemingly innocent as caffeine can have potentially disastrous consequences to those who get addicted, landing some even in the hospital. Southern's current policy grants protection from punishment to students who self-report a substance abuse problem. The institution will provide them with helpful screening and intervention from trained, licensed clinical mental health counselors. In extreme cases, the student may be referred to a local treatment facility. For SAU News, I'm Josue Vega. If you or someone you know are struggling with substance abuse on our campus, please contact Student Support Services through the number on our screen. You will be safe and receive confidential professional health. After almost 15 years, Women's Dean J.P. Mathis is leaving Southern. Dean Mathis has been an Associate Dean since 2008. Prior to coming here, she served as a Girls Dean at Highland Academy, an Adventist high school near Nashville, Tennessee. Mathis and her husband will once again return there in June, once again as Deans. Mathis says the most fulfilling part of serving as dean are the relationships she shares with students. You know, that's what makes you do it every day. It sure isn't for paperwork and stuff like that. <laughs> but, you know, I love to play in intramurals and I love to have kids come in and whatever they need to talk about, share and pray together and know that God is going to help them in their journey. Mathis trusts that God has led her to making this impactful decision. In total, Mathis has served as a dean in Adventist schools for nearly 30 years. Throughout the semester, professors and students alike have complained about the Wi-Fi connection in Brock Hall. As I found out earlier this week, this has raised several questions about Southern cybersecurity. At Southern, internet access is an essential part of the college experience. Nearly every class uses it, not just for assignments, but for communication and attendance too. But it usually gets taken for granted unless it doesn't work. Then it becomes a nightmare to handle. Not many students know this, but right behind the card desk is there actually an entire department of IT professionals who every single day are monitoring the network, defending against attacks, and even investigating. Um, we're making sure that logins um, are coming where they're supposed to come from. So like if we're seeing logins from Russia or China or other countries, we usually throws a red flag and we go and look and investigate it. Another peek behind the scenes is how IT trains their employees what to click on and what not to click on. They, what they do is they send phishing emails. They kind of look like this. This email looks like it's from Amazon, but if you were to click on the link, it would actually take you to a website saying that you've been got by a phishing test. 
which means a scammer could have infected your computer with a virus. I finally asked Derek Sherbondi, the associate IT director, about the connection issues in Brock. Apparently the issue was actually on the website side and not the connection side. Connection was still strong overall campus, but when it came to logging in, there were some issues that caused eClass to slow down. Thankfully, these issues have now been resolved and soon the connection should be back to normal. With SAU News, I'm Brandon Bell. Derek also mentioned that the IT department is always looking for feedback, and if more condition, connection issues arise, students should feel free to reach out and let them know. Research and analysis remains important within our community. Southern celebrated campus research today, awarding students for their time and effort. Numerous majors presented papers, posters, and presentations all across campus. Here in the gym, students tried to win judges' attention with their best research. Science, social science, and humanities competed in separate oral presentations. Three student winners presented in the presidential banquet room. President Shaw, staff, and faculty applauded their hard work. Each winner received a scholarship. For more details regarding the full program, check out knowledge.e.southern.edu. The beloved Sunrise Resurrection pageant have returned to campus over Easter weekend after a two-year-long absence because of COVID. Reporter Maria Hernandez takes us back to the old streets of Jerusalem where students dressed as costumes or recreated the biblical story. It was a foggy Saturday morning when around 42 soldiers dressed up from top to bottom with helmets, shoulder plates, body armors, swords, shields and sandals. The Roman army consisted of students, faculty and alumni prepared to help tell the story of Jesus at the Sunrise Pageant. Uh, ever since I was little, coming through it, I've always enjoyed watching how the soldiers moved and how they participated in it, and I've always been really uh, interested in it. It's kind of different being on the not so the Jesus loving side, but still being a part of it and helping bring that all together, and make it real. Is this your king? Sunrise cast members rehearsed for about a month to learn all their parts. From the role of Jesus to a soldier, everyone had work to do to accurately portray Jesus' life. So I always just start to think about humanity and the condition of humanity, and I think it puts me in, like, what does God feel when he's going through that, when Jesus went through that. So. I had to take the prerequisites of like the horsemanship class and to show that I had experience with it. Um, and then I've also had some like other back, uh, acting background, which also helped a lot. It was a fun challenge to try to stay in character, not react to people and stuff. Because I was like the first soldier that everybody saw. Um, and so I was like the one person that everyone would try to mess with right away. I'm not having any of this! Go to Golgotha! <laughs> Many of the participants have been on Sunrise for a long time and enjoy recreating the Savior's final days. Ken Rogers was the first one to play as pilot in the late 90s and still joins the pageant with the hope to teach others about Jesus. I hope that they learn something more about Jesus each time that, that they come and realize that uh, having gone through all of this, Jesus chose to die that we might have eternal life. Uh, there's just no other God like our God. It was around 7.30 in the morning when a sunrise cast and extras began preparing for the day. Behind me is the last group to go through the final scene. Sunrise was a blessing and a powerful experience for each one of the guests and the participants. This is how the world will know that you're my disciples, if you love one another. For SAE News, I'm Maria Hernandez. Despite the long hours, Sunrise volunteers say the experience is inspiring and reaffirms the sacrifice Christ made for us. So no, what's your favorite part of Sunrise? I'd have to say the market marketplace, like how they just have it all along the promenade. It just feels the most real. Yeah, 100%. That's mine as well. A group of business majors are at Long Island University today, competing in a national competition for entrepreneurship. The business club known as Anactus is competing with other college chapters to win the chance at competing in the Anactus World Cup later this year in Puerto Rico. And Noah has been working on this story. What's all this about? It all started a couple of years ago after a student mission trip to Zambia. Anactus club members discovered a need for steady employment and natural soap that they called Akuna. One of the flagship projects of Anactus, Acuna has been seeing great success over its two years existence. Acuna, along with the rest of the Anactus groups, are having their final meetings of the semester 
right down this hall. Smell good, feel good, do good. That's the motto of Acuna Soap Industries. The idea was birthed from former Enactus member Josh Dragnet as he volunteered two years ago as a student missionary in Zambia and became connected with the people and culture where he would begin an industry. He would use that industry as an opportunity to grow the community and to provide jobs along with a livable wage to the employees. With a focus specifically on getting more women and youth into the business scene and providing a product that was needed to fill a niche. Currently, Akuna has hired 50 employees and produced over 70,000 bars of soap, and they are still expanding with a factory currently in construction. With the growth experienced by Akuna, they are looking to expand into foreign markets. Enactus is working to build these supply chains and connections so it is easier for them to do so and hope to sell the soap in American and Adventist communities soon. So our purpose is to manufacture high quality, affordable and healthy soap for people in Zambia. We want everyone in Zambia to be able to have access and to be able to afford a healthy bar of soap so that they can keep their, themselves clean because no one should be barred from that. Our, our mission is kind of expanded from helping people there directly through giving them soap to sell to us developing connections here now, developing supply chains, figuring out how to ship it so that we can put it in boutiques here in Chattanooga, selling the Adventist community and also these bigger, bigger chains to get it out to more people. Currently, Patrick Scriven and Ashley Blake, both former Southern students, are in Zambia serving leadership roles at Akuna. However, Enactus wants local leadership to eventually take charge. So Noah, when can we expect to see Akuna soap in the States? While there's no exact timeline for that, it should be sooner rather than later. Okay. When will we know when Southern's Enactus Club will go to the next round? Now that we should know in the next couple days or so. Thanks, Noah. You're welcome. The Crosswalk Church is a popular destination for many Southern students on Saturdays. But what makes it so popular? Is it the change in message or in delivery? Lodger Lantigua brings us the story. Crosswalk Church is a fairly new addition to the Chattanooga area's already overflowing amount of churches, only starting at services in late 2018. Unlike the traditional church look with pews and stained glass windows, it takes place on a stage filled with lights, screens, and lots of music equipment. There's no dress code, there's coffee and donuts if you happen to walk in early, and of course, the service. The pastor starts the service with prayer and ends it with a sermon. I pray no matter which of those groups you find yourself in this, this morning, you walk away affirmed, empowered, and re-energized. While in between, a musical band comprised of volunteers sings their hearts out to God. But what most people don't know is that Crosswalk is part of a collective, with several other locations scattered across the country. Chattanooga is the very first of these satellite locations. But how does it keep bringing people back? According to several volunteers, the unique experience combined with the central Christian values people are accustomed to keeps them engaged and inspired. I like the fellowship. Everybody's so friendly and so welcoming, and I like their mission to love well and outreach to others, and I especially love the song service. When I first came to Crosswalk and I heard their song service, it just it grabbed my attention, and yeah. According to Crosswalk Village's official website, evangelism isn't an event. It's the orientation of the heart. Every interaction is a chance to share the gospel, and it's everyone's responsibility. In this way, and many others, Crosswalk Church stands as a testament to their motto, love well. With SAU News, I'm Roger Lantigua. Make sure to check out Crosswalk Church through the number on screen. Test week is coming soon, and Christine Magison finds out where everyone likes to go to study. What? Finals are coming up soon, and who doesn't need their motivation to turn up to 100? One way to improve your chances is to find a good study spot. According to recent studies, seating, light, noise, and even color can influence your productivity. 
Based on a recent Instagram poll, most people like to study at home. But when I ask people in person, they like coffee shops or a study room. So to cover all your bases, book a study room here at Beats, get a cookie because you deserve it, and slide your way into a study break. Naturally lit environments typically achieve grades that are 25% higher than those in dimly lit classrooms. I have a group that studies here. Um, just a conducive to sitting atmosphere with a little fire, a little crackly, and big, open. You can still see things that are happening. Because the fresh air helps me stay motivated. Ellen White would approve. Others like to study in the library, like Nicole Pustea, who usually studies in a study room during the week, but changes up the routine on Fridays. You just feel that weekend vibe and you can't do it, so like going like to Watt, Wired or like Oaks like gets your momentum back up. The library, second floor, it's quiet, for the most part. So you can be quieter. Even color can affect study. Red stimulates learning and creativity, although it can raise blood pressure and cause stress. Yellow can create a positive feeling and help students stay engaged. To absorb more information, make sure to keep a good posture, but get comfy. Specialists say when you're comfortable, you will stay focused and motivated for longer. My room, because it's just so cute and also the plants, they just make it feel homey and the oxygen maybe. So in the next couple weeks, hang in there. And remember, rest is really important. Well, a better question would be, what is my favorite time to study? And that would be between probably 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. But the problem is I go to bed at 11. For SAU News, I'm Christine Magnuson. We'd like to wish a student studying for finals good luck. Noah, what's your favorite place to study? I usually study in my dorm room, but I also like studying here in like the studio in the edit base. Yeah, this is a good place. Uh, SAU News is a production of the television and news production class here at Southern School of Journalism and Communication. I'm Brandon Bell. And I'm Noah Bynum. Do you have a newsworthy story? Head over to our Instagram and send us a message at SAU underscore news. Thanks for watching.